Happy 4th of July. My previous video illustrated the convenience yield in the cost of carry model that determines for us the theoretical futures price. And for a while, we struggled with how to fit the lease rate into the cost of carry model and the relationship between the lease rate and the convenience yield. So this is a little bit technical for FRM or CRF candidates in general, but if you've struggled with how exactly does the lease rate fit into the cost of carry model, then I'm happy to share this video with you. My previous videos illustrated the cost of carry model, which determines for us the theoretical price of the commodity futures contract. And recall that cost of carry model tells us to expect a theoretical price that is a function of today's spot price of the commodity grown at what I called the net cost of carry or the cost of carry minus any convenience. Cost of carry denoted by small c and we said based on John Hull this could contain up to three factors. Any, con any commodity whether investment or consumption is going to have a positive R for the risk-free rate that is to say we need to borrow or incur the opportunity cost of funds in order to purchase the spot commodity so that's a cost of ownership that drives up this futures price now if it's a consumption commodity then we need to store it as well that is also a cost of ownership that pushes up this theoretical futures price if it's an investment commodity on the other hand then it may pay a dividend or pay income to us as the owner obviously that's a benefit of ownership going in the other direction of storage cost and that's denoted small q tending to pull down the theoretical futures price we even mentioned that as a uh, McDonald says, one of the authors, that storage costs can be thought of as negative income. So you can see they move directionally in the opposite. And finally, in this general form, we explicate or pull out Y as the convenience yield and is also a benefit of ownership. So it's analogous to dividend or income, but whereas dividend or income is tangible benefit of ownership, the convenience yield is the intangible benefit of ownership that we infer from an observed forward or futures price. And so the convenience yield is the plug variable that reconciles what we observe with the cost of carry model. So where does the lease rate fit into this? Well, for, that, for the example, to show you that, I'm gonna use gold because gold is the classic example of a commodity with a lease rate. And our gold is going to have a convenience yield and a lease rate. So I'm going to reconcile those. But I'll mention that we did say that the defining feature of a consumption commodity, and this gets to the fact that there isn't otherwise a no arbitrage price. The defining feature of a consumption commodity is a convenience yield. So strictly speaking, if gold has a convenience yield, then gold qualifies as a consumption commodity. We also said that commodities, it's not mutually exclusive. So gold is like silver in, the, in that it's both a consumption and an investment commodity. So my example for lease rate then, I tried to use a fairly recent price for the spot price of gold, rounded as usual, $1,200 per ounce, $1,200 per ounce at the spot price assumption. I'm assuming a one-year contract to keep my formulas as simple as possible. And then my assumption for the risk-free interest rate is 3% per annum, as usual, continuously compounded, if for no other reason, than to enjoy the benefits of the elegant exponents. But these could be discrete, and the so these, ver these formulas all have uh, discrete versions as analogs. Okay, so if I want to infer the lease rate, I need one other input, so to speak, and it's related to the convenience yield because we said the convenience yield is a factor that needs an observed price. And so the lease rate is closely related, and that is to say the lease rate and the convenience yield, they are both inferred from an observed 
futures price. So just in my previous video, I emphasized the distinction between the theoretical futures price that is returned for us by the model and the fact that we don't necessarily expect to observe, expect to see the traded price equal to the observed price. As always, assets either trade rich or trade cheap relative to the theoretical price. But what we do need for the convenience and lease rate is an observed futures price. So I'm just assuming $1,230, $1, and you can see it's in hard input. It's not solved for the model because I need the price in order to infer for the convenience and lease rate. Another way to think about this is we're using this, this model, but the forward price becomes an input, and the output becomes the lease rate and the convenience yield. So here's my general form of the cost of carry. We said this is general and then it has specific variations depending on which cost of carry factors are applicable. Well in gold those factors are the risk-free rate, always applicable, storage for gold, and we said convenient we're saying convenience yield. So these are the three factors. There's my general form. Now where is the lease rate? Well what reconciles this is and this took me a little while to figure out, actually. But the what reconciles this is a, that the lease rate is equal to the convenience yield minus the storage cost. So the way that I think about this is that the lease rate is the net convenience yield. Convenience minus storage cost. Why is that? Well, that's because what is the, com what is the commodity lease rate? It's the borrowing rate of the commodity. So imagine you are the owner of the gold. The lease rate is what you would charge somebody else if you were to lend your gold out. And in theory, under all these assumptions, what would you charge if you were going to take the gold that you own and lend it to somebody else? Well, in theory, by lending the gold that you own, you are going to lose that convenience yield after all, which is the intangible benefit of holding the commodity. So you're giving that up. So that's something you would charge, but you're saving the storage cost. You don't need to store it while you're lending it. So the theoretical lease rate, as, as mentioned by McDonald, is the difference between the convenience and the storage cost. And so you can see here, if we take our specific cost of carry model, and we just take the exponent here, if I just focus on that, my R minus Y minus U here is just takes this and rearranges this, and you can see becomes here in the exponent from R plus U minus Y, I can replace with R minus the quantity Y minus U, and that is R minus the lease rate. So that I've now rearranged the cost of carry model as a function only of the risk-free rate and the lease rate. And so this explains why we generally solve for the, list, the lease rate only as a function of the risk-free rate, or what I mean specifically, if we, if we divide both sides here by the spot rate, I'll cancel there, then I'll take the natural log to liberate my exponent here, then I end up with the natural log of the forward price divided by the spot price, and then I'll multiply by 1 over t to divide that out, equals r minus l so that my lease rate, if I want to infer it from only the forward and spot prices, is going to equal risk-free rate minus one divided by the maturity times the natural log of the forward divided by the spot price. So that's a version of the lease rate that you typically see when we, it's inferred from the forward, the relationship between the forward and the spot price, and also the risk-free rate. And then, by the way, this is also consistent with what we see about the gold lease rate, which is typically expressed as LIBOR minus something called the go-for or gold forward rate. But you can see this really maps to that. We say gold lease rate 
LIBOR as the risk-free rate minus the GOFO, which is a, a forward rate informed by the forward price. So it's consistent with the specific literature on the gold lease rate. And you can see I can, I've done that right here, and I'll just retype it. If I wanted to solve for the lease rate, given what I see, I would take the risk-free rate, I would subtract 1 divided by the maturity, multiplied by the natural log of the forward price that I observed. So you can see how that it's directly informed by whatever we observe and therefore would change based on what we observe in the forward price divided by the spot price that we see today. And let's see, let me copy my format and I get 0 0.53. And then, so my lease rate is directly informed, but then I could use that, use the fact that my lease rate equals my, what I'm calling the net convenience yield. I could infer my convenience yield, of course, it's going to be equal to the lease rate plus the storage cost. So in my case, where my storage cost is 1%, my convenience yield is implied by the lease rate. And in this case, it's 1% higher or 1.53%. And now you can see based on these relationships, both of these values are consistent with the observed forward price and would therefore obviously change if the observed, as the observed forward price changes. So that's the lease rate. Again, I think of it as the net convenience yield. I hope that was helpful. If this if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and you'll receive updates as lately I've been publishing every week. Thank you.